Stonehenge, Britain's wonder of the world. Surely the most iconic and mysterious structure ever constructed in the British Isles. There's something buried in the ground near Stonehenge, something huge. We're not talking about a few tools or bones. We're talking about a colossal monument hidden in plain sight for millennia. A recent top secret LIDAR scan just peeled back the earth like a layer of skin, and what it revealed is, to put it mildly, terrifying. The discovery is so massive, so game-changing, that it suggests the stone circle we all know is just a single gear in a much larger, more mysterious machine. What many overlooked is that the real secret of Stonehenge wasn't in the stones, but beneath them. The Unseen Empire. It's called the Stonehenge Hidden Landscapes Project, a four-year mission to go beyond what the eye can see. A team of archaeologists and scientists decided to stop just digging and start seeing. They brought in a high-tech arsenal of ground-penetrating radar, high-resolution magnetometers, and crucially, airborne LIDAR scanners. Think of LIDAR as a kind of laser-powered X-ray for the landscape. From an aircraft, millions of laser beams per second are fired at the ground. They bounce back, measuring every tiny dip, bump, and groove in the terrain, even those hidden by grass and soil. This technology is so precise it can reveal the ghostly outlines of structures that were leveled and buried thousands of years ago. What they were looking for were the missing puzzle pieces, small settlements, forgotten pathways, the everyday stuff of the people who built Stonehenge. What they found, however, was something nobody was prepared for. Just two miles away, at a place called Durrington Walls, the scans began to paint an impossible picture. Durrington Walls was already known as the site of a large Neolithic settlement and a massive circular earthwork or hinge. But as the data poured in, a shape started to emerge from beneath the hinge's massive bank. It was a line, a perfectly defined, slightly curved row of enormous pits. These weren't post holes for a wooden fence, they were giant sockets in the earth, each designed to hold a massive upright stone. As they scanned further, the line became a colossal arc, a C-shaped sweep of up to 90 standing stones, some estimated to have stood 15 feet tall. They had been deliberately toppled and buried, hidden from the world by the very people who put them there. The scale of this is almost impossible to grasp. This super hinge, as it's now called, would have been more than one mile in circumference. It was a stone monument 15 times the size of Stonehenge. The iconic circle we see today could fit comfortably inside just a small section of this hidden behemoth. For 4,500 years, this colossal arena of stone giants lay sleeping under a blanket of earth. The thing nobody tells you is that the builders of Stonehenge didn't just create one monument. They engineered an entire landscape of them. They built a sprawling sacred complex with Stonehenge and this new discovery as its twin centers of power. The scientists who saw these images for the first time were left pale, staring at a ghost monument that had just rewritten every book on prehistoric Britain. What many overlooked was that the real mystery wasn't just how they built Stonehenge, but why they hid its bigger, older brother. The discovery raises a flood of chilling questions. Was this a rival monument? A ceremonial stadium for thousands? Or the first failed attempt at a grand design? The Earth had been forced to give up its oldest secret, revealing a hidden empire of stone that is forcing us to rethink everything. The silent stones of Salisbury Plain suddenly seemed to be part of a much louder, more complex conversation. What they found next would only deepen the enigma connecting Stonehenge to a mystery far, far away. A map made of stars. The revelation of the buried superhinge at Durrington Walls was a shockwave, but the ground-penetrating technology was revealing more than just new structures. It was exposing the invisible threads connecting them. As scientists mapped the entire landscape, a stunning blueprint emerged. They found 17 other previously unknown ritual monuments scattered across the plain. They discovered massive prehistoric pits dug in precise alignments that seemed to track the movements of the sun and moon. It became clear that Stonehenge wasn't a standalone object. It was the center of a sprawling, interconnected ritual park, a place where the landscape itself was engineered to reflect the heavens. The entire valley was a kind of celestial clock and the people who lived here were its keepers. 
You see, for a long time, the biggest question was how. How did a so-called primitive people, with no metal tools, no writing, and no wheel, manage to quarry, transport, and erect these megaliths? The larger sarsen stones, weighing an average of 25 tons, were sourced locally. But the smaller blue stones, weighing between 2 and 5 tons each, were a different story. For a century, geologists had traced them to one specific place, the Preseli Hills in Wales, a staggering 150 miles away. Imagine dragging a stone the weight of two cars across mountains, rivers, and forests. The sheer logistical nightmare of this feat is a wow factor in itself, pointing to a society with incredible organization and a fanatical devotion to their goal. But the latest scans and geological analysis have thrown another, even crazier wrench into the works. The focus turned to the very heart of Stonehenge, the altar stone. This is a six-ton slab of sandstone that lies flat, almost like a sacrificial table. For 100 years, everyone assumed it was just another one of the blue stones hauled from Wales with the others. But new, incredibly detailed analysis has revealed something that, to put it mildly, blows that theory out of the water. The chemical signature of the altar stone doesn't match the Welsh quarry at all. In fact, it doesn't match anywhere in the region. The closest geological match scientists can find is in northern Scotland, over 430 miles away. Let that sink in. 430 miles. That's like dragging a pickup truck from Washington, D.C. to Boston, but without roads, wheels, or modern equipment. It implies a coordinated effort across the entire island of Britain. It suggests trade networks, communication, and a shared cultural vision on a scale that historians never thought possible for Neolithic people. Why go to all that trouble for one specific stone? What made it so special that it had to be brought from the other end of the country? Was it a symbolic union of different tribes, a sacred relic from an ancestral homeland? Many people are crazy about these theories, but the evidence on the ground is undeniable. This wasn't a local project. It was a national undertaking. The effort involved is staggering, showcasing an obsession with specific materials and locations that goes beyond our modern understanding. The mystery of the stone's origins points to a people who saw the world in a profoundly different way. They weren't just building a temple. They were assembling a collection of sacred elements from across their known world, creating a microcosm of their entire island. The landscape was their canvas, the stones were their paint, and the stars were their guide. But what if their world was even bigger than we thought? What if the blueprint for Stonehenge came from somewhere else entirely? The Anatolian Puzzle Piece When you have a mystery as profound as Stonehenge, with its astronomical alignments and incredible engineering, it's only a matter of time before people start looking for connections to other ancient wonders. For decades, fringe theories have tried to link Stonehenge to the Great Pyramids of Egypt. Both are architectural marvels, built by ancient cultures with an uncanny precision and a deep understanding of astronomy. The Great Pyramid of Giza is aligned almost perfectly with the cardinal directions, while Stonehenge is famously aligned with the solstices, the rising sun on the summer solstice and the setting sun on the winter solstice. Could there be a connection? a shared ancient knowledge that spanned thousands of miles? For a long time, this was dismissed as pure fantasy. The timelines didn't seem to match up perfectly, and there was no evidence of contact between Neolithic Britain and Old Kingdom Egypt. But the thing nobody tells you is that sometimes the wildest ideas contain a kernel of truth. Modern DNA analysis has thrown a fascinating new puzzle piece on the table. Studies of ancient human remains from Britain have revealed a massive sudden shift in the population around 4000 BC. The original hunter-gatherer population was almost completely replaced by a new group of people who swept in from the east. And when scientists traced their genetic lineage, it led them all the way back to Anatolia, modern-day Turkey. This is a jaw-dropping revelation. Why? because Anatolia is home to Gobekli Tepe, a vast temple complex that is 6,000 years older than Stonehenge and is considered by many to be the world's first true megalithic structure. These Anatolian farmers brought agriculture to Britain, but it seems they also brought something else, a tradition of building massive ceremonial monuments with stone. 
Suddenly, the idea of a shared architectural heritage doesn't seem so crazy. It suggests that the impulse to build structures like Stonehenge wasn't invented in Britain but was carried across a continent, an idea that evolved and adapted along the way. This doesn't mean that Egyptians taught Britons how to build Stonehenge, but it points to a more complex, interconnected ancient world. Perhaps the pyramids and Stonehenge aren't directly related, but are two distinct expressions of a much older, widespread human impulse to build massive structures that mirror the cosmos. It's a tradition that found its voice in the deserts of Egypt and in the green fields of England, and that of course brings us to the most controversial theory of all. Aliens. The idea that ancient astronauts must have been involved is a tempting one. How else could ancient people have achieved such incredible feats? When you look at the perfect alignments, the massive stones moved over impossible distances, it's easy to see why many people are crazy about this explanation. While archaeologists find no evidence for extraterrestrial involvement, the theory speaks to the sense of awe and disbelief that Stonehenge inspires. It feels like it was made by something more than human. The skill and determination required are so far beyond our expectations of the past that the alien theory becomes a metaphor for a lost, almost superhuman capability. Whether it's a link to Egypt, a tradition from Anatolia, or a wild tale of ancient astronauts, these theories force us to expand our imagination. They challenge our condescending view of the past and ask us to consider that these Stone Age people were perhaps more connected more knowledgeable and more ambitious than we ever thought possible. But in the end, after all the speculation, what does this new discovery really mean for the person watching this, for the average person trying to understand this incredible mystery? More questions than answers. So what are we left with? A hidden super hinge, a six-ton stone dragged across a country, and tantalizing echoes of a connected ancient world. For the average person trying to wrap their head around this, it can feel overwhelming. Are we supposed to believe that a group of farmers thousands of years ago just woke up one day and decided to build a celestial calculator out of stone? Did all of this really happen with just ropes, sweat, and clever leverage? The thing is, that's exactly what the evidence is telling us, and it forces us to look at our ancestors not as primitive brutes, but as brilliant engineers, patient astronomers, and deeply spiritual people. The discovery of the buried monument at Durrington Walls, made possible by LIDAR, has fundamentally changed the game. What many overlooked is that we weren't just missing a piece of the puzzle, we were looking at the wrong puzzle entirely. We saw Stonehenge as a lonely outpost of genius, but the scans reveal it was the capital city of a vast ritual landscape. To put it mildly, this was the work of a sophisticated, highly organized society. You don't build something on that scale without a social structure, without leaders, planners, and a population of thousands willing to dedicate their lives to a shared vision. This wasn't a weekend project, it was a multi-generational obsession. You see, these discoveries challenge us to rethink the very meaning of civilization. We tend to associate civilization with writing, metal, and cities, but the people of Neolithic Britain had none of that. What they had was a profound connection to the land, an encyclopedic knowledge of the stars, and an incredible ability to mobilize human effort for a common goal. They wrote their worldview not on paper, but into the landscape itself, creating a legacy that has endured for over four millennia. They may not have had our technology, but they were not our inferiors. In some ways, their ability to create something so enduring with so little makes their achievement even greater than our own. So, was Stonehenge a temple, a tomb, or a gateway to another world? The more we uncover, the less we know. If they could build this, what else have we missed? Like and subscribe for more journeys into the unknown.